Please. What do you advocate being done? Oh, well, there, there's quite a few things that we could do. One, we have to oppose the pro-life movement because the pro-life movement regulates when, where, and how you can murder babies. And it opposes abolitionism, which it makes it actually illegal. So we need to educate people and tell them that we need to actually make it illegal and stop making what the Bible calls iniquitous decrees, right? Bad laws, wicked uh, laws. The Bible says, woe to you men who make bad laws, right? Iniquitous decrees. Mm -hmm. So do that. Also, um, we need to talk to our pastors and get them to promote abolitionism which is a biblical concept the pro-life concept um, is basically driven by the catholic movement and um, is not a biblical movement at all because they don't actually want to make abortion illegal okay and then um, the other thing is is we should actually get involved in local politics like you could go to your district where you live and show up to those meetings and a lot of times in texas there's actually nobody that shows up to those so you automatically become the district chair so the district chair can actually go and be a delegate at the Republican Party in Texas, right? So when they hold their conventions, and then you can go and tell all the other delegates and all the other chairs and all the other representatives and congressmen and senators um, of the Republican Party that, hey, we need to stop regulating it. We need to make it illegal. There's a bill, HB 948, that came out that none of the churches, nobody talked about, would actually make abortion illegal in Texas, all right? And it got tabled because the politicians, the pro-life politicians, um, knew that Texas Right to Life wouldn't give them any more money if they w went for abolition, right? Texas Right to Life is a good organization. No, 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 it's bad. It's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a regulation business, right? So they tens of millions of dollars every year, and they give it out just like um, Planned Parenthood gets money from the government, and they give it to Democrats, right? Well. Um, Texas Right to Life gets hundreds and hundreds of you know, millions of dollars and they give that money to pro-life politicians. But the problem is the pro-life politicians never write bills to make it illegal. So when a bill comes to make it illegal, Texas Right to Life opposes it because they say that women shouldn't be held accountable when they murder their babies. We shouldn't make it illegal, right? We don't want to make women criminals. That's what they say, right? Where if a woman kills a one-year-old, then you know, it's, it's a crime. And so if a woman kills a baby in her tummy, it should be a crime also, right? right? So there are a lot of things that we can do. And this is like, you know, on Sundays, this is a good thing to do because it um, brings a lot of awareness. It does agitate and make a lot of people mad, but a lot of people stop and talk and we've given out hundreds of these right here and people read it and, and look at what's going on and they actually change their mind. Like the gentleman over here, like, he just heard heard about what we were doing and stuff and he was totally pro-life and now he's like had to repent of that you know like i've always worked he's always worked to regulate child sacrifice and now he's like yeah well, no, know that there are very few people that even understand the difference right that's true right but our religious leaders know the bible and know what the bible says right and they need to repent of being afraid of people right and actually do what the bible says which is thou shalt not murder and never make a bill or a law or support a bill that says well after a baby has a heartbeat well, i always, always thought i don't know that i still don't but i, I always thought that texas right to life and organizations like that were trying to make it illegal <laughs> Yeah. But they don't. I'm a district chair, right? Because I went to my um, local um, Republican meeting in my county, right? And nobody showed up for my district. So I became the district chair, right? And then you go to Texas Right to Life and all these companies and they'll tell you, oh, well, yeah, we, we want to abolish abortion. We want to get rid of abortion. And they're like, okay, well, why don't you make a bill that'll make it illegal? And they say, oh, yeah, we, we won't do that. And there's a bunch of reasons why we won't do that. But if you get down to the main reason is they don't want to make women um, criminals for killing their babies. The other thing is they say that it'll wipe out all the pro-life bills if, if they, uh, if, if they uh, abolish abortion. But who, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's illegal. And they'll say, well, all this work that we did will be for nothing. And we say, yeah, you need to repent of that. Where do you even, where do you even find out about the meetings? You can go on Google and type in um, um, your city and say and just Google a Republican uh, district meetings and um, Republican district meetings. yeah they have them every month uh, one day every month and it's different days and different districts and, and stuff the meetings for just 
legislation of all kinds? Well, yeah, what they do is they, what they do, um, the Republican Party is really like a, really a grassroots party. It really is. So your district, you have about 5,000 people in your district. And so if you go and you become the district chair, then they say, okay, look, those 5,000 people are your responsibility. You know, make them Republicans, right? And for the most part, they probably are Republicans. So then, so then you, um, th so then they ask you, what does your district want? What, what matters to you? You know, because you're speaking for those 5,000 people, even though they didn't even elect you. You know, that's why Christians have to rise up and be involved in the political process because Google uh, a Republican district meeting, Republican you know, for, for your city, right? And then, um, and then you get to help make laws. Like the first thing I did is I brought a resolution to abolish abortion in Texas. Like my district wants to make abortion illegal. We went to the, um, the Dallas convention, the last con the two conventions ago, and walked around with a flyer saying, hey, we need to repent of being pro-life. Stop regulating abortion and let's make it illegal. Well, guess what? There was only like eight or nine of us did that, right? And we just walked around for a week. Guess what the number one priority of the Republican Party was after we did that? To abolish human abortion in Texas. Just a few no Homer Simpsons that like love God. That's all it took. Godly men just, they, what happens is they grow fat in the day of slaughter. They, they just like are comfortable. You know, like I have a motorhome and I travel around and we go to different places. I have nine kids and I sit with old people and you know what they talk about? Like the best places to eat, the most comfortable places to live, you know, and that's, but we need, you know, like if you read the Bible and especially the prophets, like Amos, in Amos 5 it says, though your prayers be many, all right, I will not hear them. You worship me, it's a stench to my nostrils. I hate your clanging instruments. Like I hate them. And God was talking to the Jewish people, his people, and what was going on is child sacrifice was in the land and they were ignoring it, right? And so God's like, I hate it. I hate you worshiping me, but you don't care about child sacrifice. You know, let's make it illegal. And he says, and then bring your sacrifices to me. And I, and I will lift you up. I will be your God, right? So that's all we're saying. We're not here because we hate this church or we hate these people. or We're just here because these are people that know and understand the Bible. And we're saying, let's have a right response to what's going on in our land. Let's just be biblical, you know? So anyway. I'm definitely for abolishing it. Yeah. It's, all right. It's, Amen. It's, it's, it's unfathomable what is actually yeah. happening. But the general public... Public. They're unaware, but yes. that's part of our religious leaders' fault, right? Like uh, Pastor Jeffries, he's vo he's very pro-life. He helps with every um, pro-life bill. He'll support every pro-life bill. But we need to stop that, you know? Like there's a bill that says partial birth abortion, right? You can't kill if it's if it's halfway out of the mom's body, you can't kill it, all right? So um, and there's another one that says you can't dismember a baby to death. All right, so in the bill it says you have to actually snap their spine first in the back of their head and then you can dismember it. <laughs> or, or like the heartbeat bill. After it has a heartbeat, you can't kill it. But before it has a heartbeat, there's no protection. Like that's an iniquitous decree. We need to make it illegal. That's all. And that's all we're saying. Let's just, let's just like do, let's honor God and God will help us. You know? So. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you, man. Okay, here. Here, pass out. Yes, sir. Here.